Hi, I'm Scott Williams. I'm gonna ink a Batman drawing. Let's see what we come up with here. A lot of artists have a similar approach from the standpoint that there's always a sense of mood. The ambiance is always extremely important and you're almost always playing with light and chiaroscuro, lots of blacks. The character sort of lends itself to a bit of a dream vision. Occasionally, depending on the storyline, it could be a, a, a nightmare vision, but there's always atmosphere, as opposed to something which would maybe perhaps be a little more science fiction oriented. When I've done some of the better known Batman projects, such as Hush or All Star, paid very close attention to the fact that the tools needed to make the storytelling flow and I ended up being a much more organic inker on those types of projects uh, as opposed to uh, something that's a little more high tech. So would not worry so much about a sense of slickness, a tightness, an ability to be able to be organic and to let the ink flow and create mood is kind of the key and that's, that's what I've strive to do when I'm doing a, a Batman drawing. Batman's an interesting character from the standpoint that he's got such a great rogues gallery, which tends to also include the city that he works in. Gotham City is a character within the Batman lore, and in some ways as much fun or more fun than the character itself. The architecture, the shadows, the smoke coming off the steam pipes, all those things sort of add to the beauty and the joy of a character like Batman. Most of the artists that I've worked with have been rather blessed for her, such high quality artists. So the pages that I get are various degrees of gorgeous. With that in mind, the pressure is on me to at the very least match what they give me. Now, if there's something that I can add, some flavor, some texture, a readability, using shapes and value that maybe aren't in the pencils, but that help dramatically tell the story. I think that's part of my purview as the inker as well. The one thing I give a great many of my artist collaborators credit for is that they do trust me, particularly with Jim, since I work with him as much or more than, than a lot of other artists. Our long relationship has led to a sense of trust. That sense of trust I don't take for granted because I've done enough penciling that I'm very particular about how I think the page should look, how I think the image should work, and to give it to somebody else is a real leap of faith. Because at the end of the day, the inks and the inker are the sort of the final arbiter of what the final image is going to be. The biggest and most bold elements are the, are the black elements, and then you kind of start going in there after the fact and adding little bits of detail just to kind of add a little character. Nice thing about a brush going over paper that I'm using here is that this paper has a bit of a tooth, and so it's very easy to create kind of these dry brush effects, which mimics shiny leather, perhaps. I tend to spin the paper a lot when I ink. I marvel when I see other artists work and they basically have the paper set like that and nothing else moves, just their hands. And they're making lines like this, or they're making lines like this, or round. And my natural motion tends to be a lot of wrist. So everything sort of has to follow this motion. So the paper just goes around and around and around until I hit the angle that lends itself to this wrist motion. A lot of inking and drawing is very much like a signature. There's just certain motions that you get comfortable with to the point where it's very difficult to actually change your signature, to change the line work, to change the angles. This is actually a very simple version of the bat symbol. I like the classic yellow oval. This is streamlined simpler, more elegant. Let's finish up this cape here. Get this ink flowing a little bit. And one thing I've always loved about Batman is you can really kind of cut loose. And if you have some rough edges, it's okay. There was a scene in Batman Hush where we went from Gotham City to Metropolis. And 
the way that we approached the Superman character and the way that we approached Metropolis was different than the way we approached Batman and Gotham City. It was a real chore because you're talking about a lot of straight edges and French curves as opposed to Batman and Gotham City where there's basically just a lot of rough edges, free-handed drawing and ellipses and perspective that was eyeballed in, and nothing had to be perfect. If it was too perfect, it wouldn't be Gotham City. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have the grit, it wouldn't have the emotion, it wouldn't have the atmosphere. This is just more kind of almost eye candy. The trick a lot of times is knowing when to stop. It's very possible to overwork a piece of art. And you're probably almost always better off under finishing it than over finishing it. And before I go too far. I'm Scott Williams. This is my Batman.